So here are your options. You have your methylphenidate, you have your amphetamines, and you have your non-stimulants, atomoxetine and veloxacine ER, and alpha-2 agents. With the stimulants, you have delivery systems. These are the different technologies. How are you gonna choose? So you're gonna pick your compound based on what you presume efficacy is gonna be for this patient. Maybe they had a first degree family member who responded well to a compound, so that's the compound you're gonna start with. You're gonna choose your technology based on the onset of action, how fast, how long it lasts, and what the side effects are. Here to date, there is no published guidelines on thinking through this sequence. You can use the alternative agents, both monotherapy or in combination as adjunct with stimulant medications as well. So let me give you my decision tree. I pick the compound first. I check the, the formulation. Is it a patch? Is it a pill? Is it a liquid? I pick duration of action. How long do I need it to last? Then I pick my delivery system. Then I choose dosing, titrate them up, optimizing dosing. Patient preference, the patient may have been on methylphenidate when they were a kid, it made me a zombie, I'm never going on that again. Okay, let's go to amphetamines. Insurance allowance, how do we reduce the administrative burden of all the PAs and the denials, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then the cost and the copay, very important. When I talk to my patients, um, often in my sessions, I would say, any difficulty getting the medicine, because I want to find out about inventory shortages, and Difficulty means, is there a cost issue here? Are you paying more than you can afford and we need to find you an alternative? I think talking to patients about cost is, makes you a clinician who's very mindful of what is involved with being a patient and the cost of being a patient. I won't spend too much time on this except to highlight to you that if you look at this list of ADHD medications for adults specifically, because the adult trials were run, You'll notice that in each and every one of them, the daily max dose in the package insert is less than the max dose that was used in the clinical trials. So do not think that the max dose in a PI is based on safety issues. It's based on the clinical protocol that was submitted to the FDA. And it doesn't answer the question if the patient failed to respond to 72 milligrams of oris methylphenidate, would they respond to 90 or 108? The other supporting evidence to this is we ran a trial with oris methylphenidate in a dose optimizing fashion up to 108 milligrams. One third of the adults, one third of the adults were over 72 milligrams. One third of the adults were over 72 milligrams. That means but if you get up to 72 and the patient says, I'm kind of better, but I'm not all the way there, if you stop, you've not optimized the patient. There are off-label uses, off-label uh, medications and on-label. So on-label atomoxetine for adults, children, and adolescents, and then veloxazine and guafacine ER and clonidine ER. 